So today on Nature's Always Right, we're gonna get into some home vertical gardening with the green stock planter here. This thing is self-watering, has five tiers. You can fit 30 plants in here. And I even got this little spinner thing here at the bottom so that I can change the sun position for each of my plants and make it easier to plant. So today we're gonna to talk planting strategies. I'm gonna show you how to set this up. We'll be planting seeds as well as transplants. So it's gonna be very valuable. And if in the future you'd like to purchase one of the green stock vertical planters, I have a $10 off coupon code for you. It's nature77. Uh, you can go through the link in the description to go check out these planters and, and how awesome they are. What I, one of the things I really love about them is they're 100% made in the USA, actually right here in my home state of Tennessee. So uh, it doesn't get any better than that and really excited to show you this fantastic vertical planter. I've got my potting soil that is a Kellogg's potting soil mix, and that's the best brand that you can get from any big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot. Another fantastic potting mix I could recommend and that Greenstock recommends is the Fox Farm soil. So any of their potting mixes would be great as well. I've got a few different uh, transplants here that I'll be planting. I got some from a local nursery, one from my buddy Andrew gave me some winter squash and some longevity spinach, which I'm really excited to grow. The longevity spinach uh, won't make it too long into winter, but I'm hoping that it'll come back in the next year and I could propagate it more and, and grow more of it because that's a really fantastic perennial spinach. And then the rest of what we'll be doing is planting seeds because we are going into fall. It is September 23rd today, I believe. Um, so it's a little getting a little bit late to start, start things for fall, but things uh, I'm in zone 7A now, um, but things like greens, um, some broccolis, cabbages, carrots, radish, beets, also different herbs like parsley and dill, things like this, uh, we'll be able to get a crop before we go too deep into winter and get a freeze and all that good stuff. And then I've also chosen this location against this wall. Facing th this direction is south. So we're gonna get a good uh, sun exposure here. Definitely wanna think about that. This wall, because it's made of brick, is going to sink a bunch of heat into it and emanate that heat off onto the planter. So this is another good reason to put this planter here so that going into winter, it will be able to um, have enough heat uh, and light as well. So when you're choosing your spot, be sure to keep all of that in mind. Also with your potting mix, make sure it's something that absorbs moisture really well. So it'll have like a peat moss or a cocoa coir in the mix uh, and that'll help um, the, the specialized watering system that works with the green stock. So now let's go ahead, let's get out all the ingredients here and build this thing. I got the spinner with mine so that I could change the position. Sometimes you wanna give things more or less sun. It makes it really convenient and you can even put a pot on top of this if you wanted to. So it's, it can be used for many purposes. So I chose a spot that's as flat as possible because as we build this tower up, it's a lot of weight. You wanna make sure that it's gonna be very stable in the position that you put this in. So this is the waterer. This goes up the very top. The water goes through here and then pours out into the different tiers self-watering for you. So here are the planters and each one of these takes one cubic foot of soil. I have six cubic feet of, of potting soil here so that's going to be more than enough for us. In their instructions they say to not pack this down at all and now I'm going to leave uh, you know two inches from the top here so that when I plant my transplants and just want to give myself that lots of room. As I place my waterer this is what helps as the water comes down and goes into each tier, make sure those holes are pointed towards uh, each planting spot. And what's cool about this is, let's say I end up not liking this spot, it's not getting enough sunlight, or I just wanna move this planter at some point, you can take the whole thing apart, and this is a weight that's not too difficult to move around. So each of these tiers is independent, you could take it off and then move it somewhere else. So this next part is pretty important. When you put the next tier on there, you wanna make sure that these little feet here go on either side so that when there's weight, it's gonna receive support. In the instructions, they recommend planting these first and then stacking all the tiers together. 
you could do it either way, I think, because when you replant this, you're not going to take it off and then replant. You're just going to um, throw the new plants in or the new seeds in. And I kind of also wanted to see the spacing because once you put this on, your space gets a little bit smaller. So, you know, I wouldn't want to put seeds too far in the back because they're going to have uh, problems getting perfect light and maybe even coming up. So I actually think I'm going to plant my transplants with it completely built. It looks like it's going to be completely fine, but I think I, I really need to stress that you should find a really level spot for this. And maybe what I even could do is I could go get a couple square foot bricks. So I just came back from Home Depot. I picked up four square foot tiles to balance this all out. I threw some little wood shims under there to get the right balance. And it's basically perfect. It's good enough. So uh, definitely do that. These are like 150 each or I kind of screwed up. I of course didn't take a picture of this or remember the size that this was. This is 16 inches and they actually sold a 16 inch tile at Home Depot. So I should have bought that one. So if you're in that same situation, look for a 16 inch single tile if you need to do that and then use some wood shims. Awesome, there we go. Now this thing is really level and that's gonna be super important for when we water. Since this thing is self watering and goes through all the tiers, uh, if it was leaning to one side, it, it would water one side more effectively than the other. And plus because there's a lot of weight here, uh, if there's wind or a dog runs by or something like that, it might, it could knock it over. So getting it perfectly balanced, I think is very, very important. So the last thing that I'll show you before we plant is these support structures that you can get. And these are more for spring and summer when you're going to have vining things like tomatoes and squash and other larger plants that can branch out. You can give them a lot more structure where they could sprout even more on this planter here. So I'm just going to install one of them just to experiment with it and to show you guys how this works. Um, but in winter, I don't really want to set this up because I don't want to shade out these lower tiers. And I'm actually going to be putting it on the bottom tier with uh, some winter squash and longevity spinach. And I'm just going to let those grow onto the ground because I want as much sunlight to be able to hit these upper cells as possible. In the summer though, you could use these to actually help shade out some sun. So you could, let's say you're doing squash or tomatoes, you could plant lettuce or other leafy greens underneath that. So it would really cut out a lot of light and allow them to grow deeper into summer. So these are insanely easy to install. They just snap in right onto the footing right there. So to connect the outer ring, you're gonna put this little nub inside of the slot there, slide them together. They pop together and then right on top. And now when they're all put together, they've got a nice structure to them and they'll be able to contain our longevity spinach here and let it go up and out a little bit more. Okay, so now let's get into planting. I'm gonna give you a ton of good tips for how to think about a vertical space what to plant where, where to put your seeds, where to put your transplants, um, and all those sort of nitty gritty details. So here I've got some winter squash from my buddy Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. And these, I, you know, we're nearing the end of September, so it's getting a little late to plant these, but um, we're just gonna go for it. And you know, I've gotta learn the seasons here in Tennessee, so it'll be a good experiment to see how late we can actually go. So I'm just gonna come through here and I'm gonna trim out all the dead. So that leaf, for instance, is, is no good. We'll just get rid of that. It's on its way to dying. So I'd rather just remove it now so the plant can focus, focus its energy on other things. All right, so here's what we're left with. We're just gonna plant the healthiest looking seedlings here. So this little guy, we're not gonna plant him, or I could plant him somewhere else, but the things that are, we only have limited space in this tower, right? So we wanna put the best plants we possibly can. So these top three really are the ones that, that should go in. The green stock gives you a free little sample of worm castings. That's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna dig out my little planting hole a little bit and then pour a tiny bit of castings in there. I put probably half a tablespoon. So after taking out my transplant, I just wanna lightly, lightly massage the outer root ball to get those roots loosened. So normally in a garden bed, I would just pull the soil from around the plant to, to fully cover it, but it's a little bit harder to do, to do in this small space. 
So we'll just bring in some extra soil. And this is the beauty of being able to spin it. You can just move it over and plant my next one. Now this longevity spinach, it came in a one gallon pot, so this is way too big uh, for, for this. So I'm actually gonna be pulling out a bunch of soil here, and I'm gonna break this one gallon down to a smaller size. Took the root ball down to just, just the roots. I didn't wanna disturb them too much, but gotta make this fit. Okay, we got it in. And so here's a good reason why planting it before you put these on. Um, is beneficial because this was a little bit harder but at the same time you know it's kind of nice to be able to see where the right placement of this plant would be you wouldn't want to plant it too far back and then put this on on top and realize oh no I planted it too far back so I'm gonna go ahead and plant the rest of the transplants and then I'm gonna explain exactly why I planted what where and some of the strategy behind that to hopefully help you when you're planting if you'd like some beginner tips on how to plant plants I have a great little video series all about how to do that that I'll put a link to here and in the video description. So to speed this up, I'm actually gonna make my planting holes for all of them right now for the rest of the transplants. Okay, so now let's talk spacing and why I chose these different locations for these plants. So the seeds I chose for the top because this is gonna receive uh, the most sunlight and warmth. Seeds need the right temperature in order to germinate and it's really going to help them being up here and getting the most sunlight, especially in those younger stages. These already have photosynthesizing leaves. They're already off to a good start, right? So the sun right now, I'm looking south and the sun, as we go deeper in the winter, it's going to continue going lower and lower on the horizon. There will be less and less light hitting the top of the soil and will come more from the side. So by the time these sprout up, they'll be able to still get sunlight, but right now they'll get a little bit of top sunlight onto the top of the soil, which will help germination. I put my herbs in the middle tier just to make it really easy to harvest them. Um, and they don't grow insanely fast, so they won't shade out these lower uh, areas very quickly. So on the rest of the third tier, I'm gonna finish those out with cilantro, dill, and chive and green onion seeds. I don't have those transplants, so. And getting into the next second tier here, I put my kale, four rows of kale here, which will be plenty for me and my wife. The things that I chose to plant, because I'm planting a little bit later, I didn't really choose much that's gonna have fruit. I wanna do things that are quick growing, that don't need a ton of sunlight. Um, I'm doing a couple things that need a lot of sunlight, like the broccoli and the winter squash here. Um, but that's just because I, I had the transplants. I got these very cheap. My friend gave me these and I want to see if they work. Into September, going into fall and winter now uh, in zone 7A, uh, we should just really be focusing on leafy greens and root crops. So for my seeds, I'm doing a few root crops like we'll be doing radish, beets, and turnips. I chose not to do carrots, even though you can actually do carrots in this. I just believe it's, it would be a waste of our space because of how long they take to grow and we won't be able to grow very many in this container. Um, so I think it's a better use of space to grow quicker growing root crops like a radish uh, or a beet. And then at the lower tier, uh, these are winter squash, so these vine out and I, uh, I wanted them on the bottom so that they wouldn't, if they were up here, they would shade out other plants. These are gonna go out along the ground. And then the same with the longevity spinach. I didn't want that to shade anything if I was planting this in the spring, I would have chose a higher position for it, but um, this may actually die during the winter, so uh, I'm just gonna leave it down here. And if any of these transplants don't make it, um, I can just come back in here and plant some more seeds, or I could go buy more transplants, or hopefully you started some other seeds in a cell tray uh, as backups. It's always a good idea to have backup seedlings that you've started from seed because uh, it's a very cheap way to start your plants. And I've got videos uh, going into more details about all these different subjects, and I'll put them in the description to help you guys more if this isn't enough detail for you. And now we're gonna move on to the seeds at the top. And I wanna make sure that this is all nice and wet 
And to make sure that it's nice and wet, I'll come in here and pull back with my finger to see how wet it actually is. And I should see about an inch down that the soil is moist and that'll be plenty for my seeds. And in the beginning stages of the plant, you may want to hand water, but after they get established, after about a week, you can let the self-watering system take over and this will do everything. Because they in the first week, plants really need that time to get their roots established, um, to be able to absorb water in other places deeper down in the soil. So that's my recommendation to you in the beginning. Of course, with seeds, we're gonna keep those wet until we see them sprout. And even after, during that first week where they're in that baby stage, make sure the soil, soil is staying moist, not soaking wet, just moist. And I'm gonna give you some basic tips on how many seeds you should be putting in. Every plant's a little bit different on the, the density of the amount of seeds that you're gonna want. But most seeds, if you just make a quarter to half an inch little indentation in the soil there, that's gonna be plenty deep. So for all your greens, your herbs, even your root vegetables, half an inch is great. So this is cilantro, and I'm gonna put two seeds in each of my holes. I made five holes. I'm actually gonna make six for one in the back. Cilantro can be seeded pretty thick, and I can cut out the extras when they come up. I wanna make sure that I'm I'm gonna get a, um, a successful sprout here. And being that this is such a small little garden, thinning out extra seedlings that aren't needed is not that difficult. So dill, I could do that same density. And I'm just trying to space them out a little bit so that they'll each get a good amount of sunlight when they come up and out. And then the final step is just to come back and water this. But I'm gonna save that for the very end when I've done all of my seeds. Now it's a really good idea, especially when you're a beginner gardener, to get some planting tags and label them so you know what each thing is when it comes up. Otherwise you may not recognize it and you'll be a little confused at what you planted. So um, you can make tags out of popsicle sticks or leftover yogurt containers. There's lots of eat cheap and free ways to do it and you can also buy some as well. I'm actually just gonna throw this in here to know uh, that I started here and then I'm gonna go around and then come back. That way I don't accidentally plant one of these twice. So now this, in, this is the second tier from the top. This is all going to be leafy greens from seed. I'm saving the top row here for my root crops. So this will get the most amount of sun here at the top. Anything that produces a root or a fruit in gardening is gonna need more sunlight. Leafy greens can be shaded out and they don't mind. They can grow most like lettuce or even chard kale that can grow in total shade and I've done that before. So this is actually the the organic seeds that Greenstock gives you in the pack. So that's just a little lettuce mix. This is only enough space for, for one head. So we're just going to put one hole right there, not in the direct center. And lettuce sprouts extremely well. So you really only need to put two seeds, maybe three seeds if you really want to guarantee it, but Lettuce is extremely, has extremely high uh, sprouting percentages, so that'll be it. And when you're harvesting your lettuce, you have the choice. You can harvest the whole head all at once, or you can take some of the outer leaves and let the plant continue to grow upwards. I'm going to plant two or three tiers here. And lettuce takes only about, you know, in this situation, just, you know, 30 days is really all it will take. So lettuce is something that you continually plant um, to get a good harvest, uh, a consistent harvest. Another tip that I didn't follow with doing seeds successfully is to have a dry hand when you put your hand into the seed bag here. Otherwise they get all over your hand and it gets a little bit uh, tricky. So Swiss chard is going to be the same situation. Just one plant I will put two seeds in there. So in the, in the charred seed itself, there's actually multiple seeds. It's called a germ seed. Once these seedlings sprout, we will thin them out to one plant. Once they get about, you know, two inches tall, I'll thin them out to only one plant so that that single plant can grow to its full ex extent. Okay. This is totsoy or Asian spinach. Same situation, I just wanna have one plant here. And then last but not least is arugula. Arugula tastes really good, the, the more baby size it is. So we'll have a few plants in here and then that'll, it'll uh, keep them a smaller size because they won't be able to grow to their fullest extent. And now we're back to our little mark that we made so we could remember. 
And now we just have the top, which will be the root crop. If you're wondering where I get my seeds, I get most of my seeds from True Leaf Market. And I've got a link in the description if you guys want to pick some of them up. Uh, they set fantastic prices, easy to navigate website. And I like that in the seed bags they give you, these are water resistant. So many of the packages, they're made from paper and I always get my hands wet. I'm a mess when I'm doing this stuff. So I always end up destroying the bag, but these can get wet and it does not damage the seeds. So these are French breakfast radishes. A French breakfast radish, we could probably fit three or four radishes in here and have no issues. So let's try four. And inside of this cell, I'm spacing them out um, as equidistantly as I can to try to guarantee that the, each of the roots grow to full size. And I'm just mimicking the spacing that I know works in a larger sized garden like what I did for my urban farm. And on seed, on seed packets or the descriptions online, um, and, and the instructions that come with the green stock actually, they will give you recommendations on how many seeds they recommend planting in here. Um, so, you know, maybe go by the, the green stock instructions because they've used this obviously for many years and they know it works well. But I, I don't like following instructions. I like doing my own thing and then seeing what works and then adapting from that. So, so here we go. So. These are Easter egg radishes. These are the two varieties that I grew for my urban farm and I personally love these ones. And now if we were in the summertime, spring going in the summer, I might be able to fit five in here. But because we're gonna have less light, I think that's a safer number to do. Oh, I'll make sure I have my mark. So next we will do beets. And for this, I'm just gonna do two. So if you can imagine the root size here, one, two, that should fit really well in there. And these are Chiogia beets, the candy cane stripe beets. These don't get massive. I'm only gonna get four beets if, uh, if they grow well, right? So I think a better use of space going into winter to have a prolonged harvest would be some more greens or other things, but I really wanna experiment with this and see what's possible. Um, and when these harvest out, I can throw in some lettuce or some other leafy greens to replace them. But right now, this is a good time to plant these because this is the last bit of warmth um, before we go into winter. So they're going to grow well right now. Last thing we're going to do is some turnips. These are purple top white globe. And we'll do the same spacing, just two. And again, I'm making my holes a half inch deep. I mean, you can pretty much just default to that when you're planting seeds. Almost everything will work at a half an inch. And then I'm gonna show you guys one more trick if you wanna stick with me here. Some interplanting. So down here at the lowest tier, our winter squash, this is gonna grow up and out. So really all that's gonna be left in here is a stem. So what that means is that's extra space that we could have vegetables growing and we can plant something that's not gonna grow big and shade out the squash here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant one head of lettuce here and then on the other side I'll plant some bunching onions. And you know I may not even get a full head but maybe I can get a little half head or something. And you know what that's great I'm gonna get some extra food in space that I may not have even used. This is also a way to ensure I do get something in this tier and don't waste my waste the valuable time I have before winter comes. So let's say this guy dies well, that's okay, because now I've got two seedlings coming up in its place in case it does fail. So there's another reason for you to try to interplant as well. And you, I have a few videos on interplanting if you want to learn more about that subject. Um, but it is a powerful technique, not only for, for farmers to make more money and grow more food, but also, of course, for home gardeners and, and homesteaders, so that you can make the most out of your garden every single year. And you know what? Just because my wife loves green onion so much, with each of the broccolis and the kale, I'm gonna do green onion there. It's such a skinny little um, plant that it won't really shade anything out. And onions are a great family of plants. They don't really get attacked by bugs and they can even help repel some pests. So there's my final tip for you. And of course, the last thing I need to do, just like with the transplants, is water in the seeds. The soil's already really wet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more moisture. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed planting with me today and learned a lot more about vertical gardening. 
And if you'd like to pick up one of the green stock vertical planners, I have a $10 off coupon for you. That is Nature77, use that at checkout and you can get to their website and look at all this stuff through the link in the description below. And it's a way that you can help out the channel as well. Thank you to Greenstock for your amazing product. And I really enjoyed setting up and using it and I absolutely would recommend this thing. Um, I'm gonna be really happy to have this, especially right now where I don't have any regular garden beds set up. Um, and it's something that I can easily move around to different positions. I'm actually gonna put this in my greenhouse once I set that up to keep this going really well in the winter. You can also really customize these things if you wanna just do uh, four tiers, you can do that. And they also have the spinner, which I think you kind of, you need the spinner. Um, and then they have, of course, the support system as well. So lots of great things. And I, you know, I noticed um, I should probably have drilled a hole in this spinner because it's filling up with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do that the next time I take this apart. Luckily, we don't have tons of mosquitoes right now, but uh, I want to drill this from the backside so that I don't mess up any of the uh, components here that help it to spin. 